How do everyone? Welcome to Potty Mouth Garden Club. Yes, we are number 58 here. So, very chilly, cold time has been happening and storms has been happening as well. Mm -hmm. So, JB, nice to have you on. Are you, are you well? Are you good? I'm okay. I'm tired. It's been a long day, but I'm, yeah, I'm so glad just, to be here. Yeah, and that's why, chill you know out. what I mean? It's a, corporate management, you're on the ladder now. Corporate <laughs> management. Don't even, at one time, you used to leave the desk and get into the woods and the meadows and... <laughs> <laughs> now it's just computer, computer, computer. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Yeah, it's Audrey. Always a pleasure. Never a chore. How are you? How are you doing? This I am you doing great. Got minus five, which is actually roughly what we're we're kind of in that zone at the moment. So no, I'm we're we're minus five. I'm minus five Celsius. I saw your uh uh your. Your temperature you're not quite that cold are you oh not not today i mean just, okay we've got more storms and storms and anything yes but, no um, you've had a lot of yeah. uh, damage going on over there absolutely well, it's lovely, to, lovely to have you on audrey it's I great to be you. here thank you and jess looking fantastic thank you very much for turning up again that's lovely that's always nice now i'm getting comfortable getting yes there. yes Nice relaxed garden mode. Now, JB, I'm just gonna I'm gonna jump you for a quick second, and then I'll go to go to Jess. JB, did you notice I tidied my hut up? You that my one of my massive yeah. job, massive job, but I just got stuck in, and I got I got it done. Do you know what I mean? No, I haven't I actually you, seen I it. You, I didn't know, I didn't want to see you doing work. I noticed <laughs> you though. You, you were getting stuck in with your greenhouse. You know what I mean? Getting all them pins and everything like that. Oh, yeah, Fantastic. True. true. Jesse. Have you started your poly? <laughs> I guess I guess that's no, no. Too cold. It was oh, too cold. Oh, it's so mild now. You've got no. Yes, excuse. well now it is. Yeah, but you know, and now I'm here. I can't do it now, can I? Yeah. <laughs> Mind you, I, I did honestly, Jess JB, I had that feeling where I oh, got cannot. You know what I mean? Like, and it was it was the YouTube percentage was like 90 percent. get it done for the video if i hadn't had the video to do it nice. would have been there all year Do you know what i mean yeah so yeah yeah i know exactly kind of what that <laughs> just what that mountain you've got to climb is like because mine took an hour if that and i was, like, blah, 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 blah. I was huffing and puffing before i came yeah. up to kind of tackle it yeah. has anybody it has, has anybody noticed though with the Frost, remember Steve saying last year, frost heave. Has anybody, again, we've got that now, you know, like the frosts have melted. I don't know, Jess, Audrey, did you hear Steve? It, it was a, it's where the soil is springy, where the ice has been frozen and it's kind of weaved its way through the soil, but it still like raises a little bit. And now it's, it's all still raised, but it's like this spongy. Has anybody, Lovely. yes. Walking oh. the dogs, I was thought, you know, and it's funny how little things remind you of the old boy. You remember? I was that? thinking about it too. Yeah. yeah, when it was frosty, I was literally thinking about him saying it just the other day. Uh, but, uh, um... Yeah, we haven't un we haven't thought at all, so I don't know. <laughs> be a few months before you. Actually, it will uh, be. It will yeah. be. But I know we have to uh, put things at least three feet down, like for footings, because of the heave from the frost. Uh, yeah. So, oh. yeah. So first I heard a bit like when, when Steve mentioned it last year, do you know what I mean? It was quite quite a new thing for me. So Audrey, what's been I know what well we'll say what's been happening in your house then, garden wise, because nothing's happening outside. So what what this no, week since last um, time has happened? Onions are, are in. Right. Finally started onions. Uh a couple of the um winter sowing jugs are done and out on my deck they're not quite in their final resting place yet but they're outside uh what else have we done this week a lot of seed sorting mm -hmm. got all my seeds sorted got my big bag to give to my neighbor and just making my list checking it twice <laughs> it's that's that's what i need to do to be honest because i have when we do this kind of show, I always have like a few packets here and there. And it's just the behind this microphone now, there's just a pile of mixed seeds that and then I noticed me bock and I thought, oh God. 
it's got to be done, but it's just like, and I know that's the kind of, this is the nice time to do it, but it's another one of them, you know, sit down and is this okay? Is that, uh, I'll sling that, keep that and... But don't you don't you let your imagination go and go, that's what that'll look like if I plant it. This is what will happen in the garden if I put this in. This Audrey. explains Audrey's obsession with growing seeds. Because my imagination doesn't work like that. No. Okay, no, I just imagine how pretty it's gonna be or how you know productive it'll be and dream about what's to come. Very nice. That's actually a lovely, you know, what I mean, because that mine's mm -hmm. like JB. I don't um thing like that, but that's a lovely way to think. Audrey. Well, it does get you through a rather uh dull task, right? Mm -hmm. If you if you let yourself imagine a little bit. Yeah, I'm I'm an imaginer, definitely, Audrey. Yeah, yeah I'm mainly imagining eating it, but yeah, it is uh, <laughs> it is the imagination. Yeah. So. Did we mention this last? Week just because both me and JB just as much, pro even more pleasure out of just growing it than eating it. Yeah, it, yeah. Are, are you? I can't remember if we're talking. Are you a definite like grow to eat or grow to, for the pleasure of growing? I mean, it's half and half. Actually, I'm feeling particularly grow to eat today because I've just been editing the vlog and I had to trawl through a whole load of old uh, like Instagram pictures trying to find a picture I knew I had that was of like my only successful microgreen sewing ever. <laughs> uh, I knew there was a picture there somewhere, but I had to scroll like way back to the beginning of 2020. And I remembered like going through, like, cause I took quite a lot of pictures of last year. I didn't so much because I wasn't using Instagram, but the year before I took tons of pictures of like dinners and lunches and stuff made with things from, uh, from the allotment. And I'm, I am so eager to eat everything right now just looking at it it just looks so good i just remembered it all so it's all like fresh in my head that's really yeah well, actually maybe jb that's what we need to do do you know what i mean because that food instagrams yes and just like <laughs> get the inspiration looking back and think all oh, right yes yes you know what i mean so mm. just but you do enjoy it when you harvest something don't you tony oh yes no, it's, yeah yeah it's but i'm i can quite easily walk away and and like you say there's some Brussels sprouts up there which really could be getting picked now. Do you know what I mean? But I didn't pick them in this weather. You know what I mean? So I mean, just uh, I could, and I'll just make a video saying you know this is ideal compost fodder, and I've left this deliberately for the compost just to show <laughs> you. Uh, oh, Jess, what what have you been up to? Anything or well, obviously not the the polytunnel, but I'm sure you've been. <laughs> thank you thank you yes it is on the it's on the cards i think that part of the looking through the old pictures was uh doing a plot tour and i've actually like re-inspired myself to get some stuff done so i think i'm going to be starting the polytunnel this week like it's what? on the cards so yeah you heard now it here it's, it's, it's here. gonna be next monday and you're gonna be like have you started it if, and I'm just going to have to yes, sign why, up and say why no. Why did you so, say that? Do you know what I mean? There's three, there's three of you here now. Are that was be... coming out of my mouth. I was like trying to pull it back in, but it wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't. <laughs> but I am feeling really, like, really enthusiastic, like doing that plot tour, because it was on the really, we've just had uh, like minus five here, um, which is quite, quite cold for us. Uh, it's back up to 12 today, but like yeah. minus five at night. And it was so frozen and so sunny and so beautiful and just like walking around and looking at all this stuff. And mm -hmm. I'm thinking, you know, oh, there's not a lot going on at the moment, but we've got so much stuff still going that's like ready to be like really, really late winter or early spring. It's all going to like burst into life. And um, yeah, it was nice to kind of get that refresh on, on what's actually it's, what's it's actually amazing going. How, so. It's amazing how, Jess, when you're there, because I was there one day when it was hard frost and like how hard and like iron hard the ground is you know what i mean and yeah it's just and i'm just thinking you kill them weeds kill them mother mm -hmm. chuck our weeds you know what i mean just so <laughs> jb you know what jb you have been going up there you have been taking you know what i mean you have get you know getting off your ass really I'm trying i'm trying i really yeah, really yeah. tried it was, <laughs> Sorry, it was thursday <laughs> and i was just like i was fed up um I just yeah, just went for it and got started on that greenhouse. It was really nice as well. I'd got the um that little sweet pea frame made 
as well, which was... Um, we just see as well, it's taken off well done. It did a little bit, yes. yeah, a little yeah. bit. 24, it I think well. it's got, is it at this moment, 24,000? Yeah, the people? mysteries of the YouTube algorithm. Oh, I know. I know. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows how it works? But um, <laughs> yeah, it's quite nice because that was a that was a design very much inspired by Steve. Um, and oh my God, I had to... I put a couple of pictures of him with his frame at the start of the video and I had to like do a bit of trolling back and it was... Um, it's quite tr it was quite difficult, you know, but it felt really nice. It was nice mm. to have that. And I've well, still got um, to be honest, or... Yeah, I've still got his his actual frame at the allotment. So the one in the back garden was just kind of inspired by his design. But um I want to do the same thing at the allotment. It's just on a very long list of <laughs> things to do, but I'm hoping I can get that up by kind of April and have some sweet peas at the plot too with like a little little seating area. I think that'll be really nice. But yeah, so I got that done started on the greenhouse and um then this weekend just had the car so i had like loads of stuff that i wanted to do at the plot but i needed tools but i had no tools i couldn't take them without the car so i did film like a little tour and just sort of thinking about what was going to go where next year and that kind of stuff um that video should be going live after this everyone <laughs> yeah, we <will. laughs> yeah. and, uh, well, after this as well i've got to go down and see what it looks like after the storm well that's what like that's that's so, exactly what i was going to um ask you because if you've took your your glass out yeah is it more dangerous because i'm like yeah a, a new, is it oh. <laughs> yeah those frames so the base the the uh the greenhouse frame is still screwed into the timber base can i just Tim can i just make an apology now just well, because I, I think this is gonna and i'm sorry folks but i think we're gonna get umpteen videos of jb about <laughs> this so just warn in there you know what i mean right sorry oh, jb yeah. you go on oh yeah I think it's going to happen, but um, it's weather, you know, like you never know what's going to happen. Like it's, I didn't know that Storm Isha, Storm Isha was a thing until after I got home from deglazing that. <laughs> and in that, oh. it, when I was filming it, I was like, make sure if there's any wind, you don't leave this. <laughs> because those frames by themselves, if they're just sat on soil, they're like, I don't know how you look at them. They're not at all aerodynamic, but they're really light and they can just get picked up by the wind yeah. um and they'll get picked up dumped on an angle and they'll just fold like a accordion or something you know and all the little bolts and bits will shear off and oh they're they're terrible um so i've got mine still screwed into the timber base i'll weight it down with a bit of extra manure but i'm gonna go go down like i said i started work at six today and then <laughs> Three o'clock now when we're filming. So as soon as we're finished, done. I'm, I'm up there. You have basically. you have no idea then what what damage is Could done. Anything. Could be anything. Well, well, I mean, on on a smaller scale than that, I was I cleaned out the hut and I left all them plastic bags there, and there was people's watering cans lying around and everything. You know what I mean? And everything there. So it's I was like, oh, which made us go up and tidy it up. To be honest, ah, you know good, what I mean? I was just kind of. But did you see? I see if I can uh, share it. Did you see um, Mark's pictures? I just oh, kind of yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We. I, I was I listening can... to the um, to the updates on like the the trains all being cancelled, and the, one of the things was saying Oof. that that's uh, one of the reasons the trains have been cancelled, like on the main line going north, was somebody's garden shed had wedged itself between the tracks. So I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look that's, at that. that's someone's had a bad day. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Well, listen, me. I've got a spinning thing there. What did? Can you see that? Every, every oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. dear, dear me. It. One second. I just quickly. We're trialing new technology here. Yes, I'll, I'll see it done there. So, oh. JB, do you not keep your tools in your shed? Uh oh, not my power tools. I like. I oh, needed no, drills no, and brackets and oh, all my screws and stuff. I was going to say that's a no. Uh, uh, yes, no, don't. don't uh, no, I leave like spades and yeah. digging. I was picturing stuff. you like every time you go to the allotment, oh. like with your entire Can gardening you imagine? kit, like on your back. <laughs> yeah, God, no, no, no. Well, what I'm just wondering, did I since like yes, I did sowings. Has anyone sown anything? I did get my Ishikua spring onions sown over there. Nothing shown yet, and I did them kind of straight after, but nothing's nothing's. I've quite, uh, I'm quite chuffed with my chili seeds because all they've germinated. Have you seen a little discussion on on the in Discord? Yeah, about yeah. Tea soaking. Now I didn't soak a single thing. Me and neither. I thought this like tea soaking was like the the, you know, like the the mystical way. 
But I'm sure I forget who mentioned it. It's just like gives you like a, a one day head start in like. Yeah, so Chili, Chili Chumps just done a video where he did like a like a small scientific test. It's quite a small sample size, but, you know, he's been doing it years and he always does the tea soak. Um, and I think he had like some graphs and I think he got on average kind of three, four, five days better germination um, on a, on the same seed, you know, so same fresh seed. Um, and I think it was kind of, yeah, average three or four days. So if you're a little bit behind, mm -hmm. then, yeah, it's certainly tea can give you a, a few days. And I think the the thing for me I've always thought is that it's good for old seed. You know, if you've got like a old seed that's been at the back of the cupboard for like four or five years, then it's a, it's a much better way to guarantee it actually activates and comes up. Is it for all seeds, JB? Do you know what I mean? I, know, I don't mean like kind of tiny little, you know, like fly away salad -y kind of stuff but tomatoes is it i know there's this you can kind of do something soak tomatoes in water so they get moldy almost but... oh yeah that's when you first store the seed isn't it um i don't know to be honest with you it's it works for chilies on the kind of i think the theory is anyway that it's uh you know they've evolved to be eaten by birds basically like only really mammals can sense capsaicin. It's developed as a defense mechanism because we have very robust digestive systems that will kill seeds. Whereas birds can happily eat chili peppers. They don't take sense capsaicin. They will get no sensation of heat. Um, so the idea is the tannins in tea kind of mimic a, a bird's digestive system, ah, basically. That's... So you're you're kind of mimicking a bit of nature and you're you're being the bird pooping out the seed, <laughs> as it were. <laughs> um so i don't know i guess if you're if your plants evolve to be eaten by a bird then yes and i guess most 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 plants that have a sweet fruit they've developed that as a a dispersal mechanism because they want something to come along and eat it to take the seed far and wide mm -hmm. so, so you could you could soak them in red wine too then couldn't you oh yeah maybe yeah just that's a good suggesting. one chili champ did a few things he did um just water and that can help a little bit. He did um, hydrogen peroxide, I think it was as well. Right. Maybe don't, don't try that at home, folks, before checking his video. <laughs> but something like that. So it's like the acidity as well can, can be a trigger. But he thought the, the chemical was going to do better than it did. And actually, the, t the tea was the best for his tests. So interesting. quite interesting. Yeah. Didn't do the wine. Not many people would waste the wine. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm happier the... wasting like the dregs of a cup of tea than a, than a glass <laughs> yeah. of yeah. No, that would be a little more practical. Mm. Yes. <laughs> Audrey, have you been sowing anything that, this week or? Uh, just the onions. And did you, oh, that's what I was going to ask you. Did you, you haven't done, these are the first time you've sown, so you didn't kind of jump these in. These are my first it. onions. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. They'll be fine. They'll be fine. They've got time. It'll be yeah. fine if you plant them the right way around, or is that right? <laughs> yeah, I do try to put the roots in the Never ground. forget. Eh? Yeah. Never forget, Audrey. Yes. Like. You'll not forget, anyways. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. We had, because um, I asked a couple of people in, or asked on Discord, like some topics. You know, just give us some kind of topics. And I've got three here. That, and Pammy Wammy's saying, the most epic fail on your allotment, I guess, or garden, you know, for Audrey's. Audrey, would you say that's the most epic fail you've had? Planting. Oh, no, I planted uh... flowers. I planted flowers upside down. Not was it, onions. Was it flowers upside down? Yes. Oh, I thought it was onions. Where no, I... it was, I'd gotten um, bare rootstock. Maybe it was, gosh, what was it now? I can't remember. I get that mixed up with so garlic traumatic. order. You've blocked it out. I am. Uh, Thank you for I'm reminding really, I'm me, Tony. that kind of word. <laughs> no, I I totally planted them wrong side up. So, yeah, that was I. Yeah, that might have been my most epic. Like, that was just incredibly silly that I did that. I would do that to Audrey. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, like, and they did the bare grow. root kind of thing. You just. <laughs> You take your well, chances. It was a bare root, and then the top of it had been dried, so they could be shipped. So it kind of looked the same at both mm. ends. So I took my best guess, and it was not a good guess. I kind of, I'm trying to think what epic feels. Yeah, I've had that many. Do you know what I mean? They're probably just all <laughs> you know, it's a day's work. 
for me. You know, okay. <laughs> when everything's a failure, you know, it's, it really takes something to set it apart into the effort. But ah, oh, one one of the ones I was most upset about was um the first year I tried melon because I had one melon fruit that was just getting there, one of the little um Minnesota midgets. I think and it was it was oh, it's so close and every day I was checking it you could just start to smell in sweet and then the next day I came along and like a rat I just had the whole thing just a massive <laughs> hole in the middle I was like oh bloody hell what's the bloody point <laughs> I remember GB when you had them you showed them pictures of the tomatoes as well you know what I mean they were kind of oh, eaten yeah. by some you know what I mean and it's we were all that was caterpillars it turned out it was uh -huh. there was like a um Bright lion brown eye caterpillar, one of the noctuids. Um, and they go mad for them. Um, but I know to they're really well camouflaged as well. Um, because they start off green when they're younger. And uh, I know to look for them now. But I think they're like a they're a real South Coast thing. I was gonna uh, say it. It's, I yeah. didn't I haven't even heard oh, that. Yeah. That, that caterpillar, do you know what I mean? So bright lion brown when, eye, I think. Yeah, when I had when I had the rats eat a lot of my tomatoes this year, a lot of people said just check it's not. It's not um, caterpillars. But I had a really good look, and then I saw the rat with it in its mouth. So it was oh, like conclusive no. that that's what it was. <laughs> that's proof. Uh, you don't need yeah. like kind of much after that. Did you, any of you know that yesterday was um, National Squirrel Day? <laughs> was it? Yes. <laughs> Um, I was appalled, but <laughs> apparently it all was day. it was National Squirrel Day. So, <laughs> and that made me, as you said, what's your epic fail? And I remember the squirrel eating like seventy five percent of my squash one year, and that wasn't necessarily a fail, but it sure felt like one. Mm. Uh, you know, they eat a little bit, and then they go on to the next one and eat a little bit and go. It must, it must sting that they've got a national day. I know. I saw it, <laughs> and there's this little squirrel, you know, he's the poster boy for the thing. And I thought, oh, my. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're desperate for national days if they give one to a squirrel. Wow. It's, <laughs> it's What's yours, Jesse? You're being very quiet. I'm just trying to think. I've had so many. I think probably watering all of my plants with poison last year with whatever was in that water was probably quite high up on the <laughs> on the list of Epic stupidity. Feels. Yeah, that was a good one. My monster <laughs> chili plant that was an epic fail. That did absolutely nothing. I'm not. I'm still not really sure why, but I put it in a thirty liter tub, and I think I used too much manure. I think I put a bit of well rotted manure in there to you know because I'm cheap, <laughs> and it was a thirty liter tub. I was like, oh, I get that in there, and I think it was too rich for it. I think it didn't like it. Just oh. kind of didn't do much. Mine, GB. I put my uh, one chili in like a big pot. My, I don't know if it was a it was a potato or like so. It must have been a thirty liter yeah, thing. Yeah, it same. never, it never kind of the others just just as well. You know what I mean? It, I mean, it was all right, but it yeah, it was. I think it it goes to prove a little bit what we say about never moving them on too mm -hmm. much into too big a pot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because their their roots spend all the time growing and they don't do much above ground. No, I have got um, nothing. It, well, it made us like think. Well, I'm not going to do it again. That's the you know what I mean. It was mm. like, like you say. What did I? I, I must have used compost, so it was a lot of compost. Yeah, what, you yeah. know what I mean. Kind of. Yeah, I'm not, as, I'm not as cheap is... as you, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay. Dirt off the roadside. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I actually did that with leaves like last year at the back. <laughs> leaves off the roadside. <laughs> oh, mine, I've gotten, uh, yeah, I've done that before. Leaves off. But it's, yeah. uh, you've got to be careful not to get the kind of the gravel in as well. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know it was like all the dog food. The, dog food. <laughs> yeah. the only time I've tried to take, because the, the, the guys come along and they, they bag up the leaves along the pavement, you know, and they just leave the bags of leaves yes. there. Yes. They so do. tempting. So tempting. And because they're only going to come along and pick them up later and stick them in the council one. So I've taken oh, yeah. a couple of them and I only did it once because it was about two thirds crisp packets and dog poo. So I sort of decided that's oh. not. Not I ideal, never, really. Jess, I never, not when you try and scoop it out with your hands, you know, out oh, of the bin bag. It's you'll like, never, well, you'll mm. never guess. You'll never guess what happened to me this morning. I swear to God, if you're eating something or anything like that. Oh no! So I went outside seven o'clock. Oh, oh. See ya. <laughs> with me sliders on, 
bare toad, <laughs> bare toad, right? I went, oh, we've got the puppy. Here he is, crapping away. <laughs> so gets me black plastic bag, picks it up. The wind caught it. The biggest lump fell on me left toes, on me toes. I was so appalled. <laughs> I was so appalled with myself. I accidentally dropped the other bit on my other foot. <laughs> so I got two bits, two bits of dog. <laughs> and I had to go into the kitchen like, Melly, Melly. Oh, oh, man. I was like, you're kidding us. In the end, I laughed, but I wasn't laughing at the, the first one. The, you know, the first time it was like, oh. But then there's that repulsed. I dropped the second bit on me, but the other foot. So, I oh, wish you'd been recording that one, Tony. Totally. Oh. So where's that going to oh, lead us God. to now? Um, <laughs> what detail, oh, that's amazing. <laughs> oh, I picked a really tight, bad time to have a glass of, like, a sip of water through, halfway through that story. Well, let's get back to... He choked. <laughs> to, that's, you know, gardening. Um, that's an epic fail. That yes. is an epic fail, that one. <laughs> I, yes, I could class that as an epic fail. Uh, <laughs> Bloody hell. <laughs> Um, Jackie23 uh, Hashtag 0760 Tomatoes for growing outside Because She's just had a greenhouse Destroyed last night You know um, what I mean Which is just like, like What we're seeing And I've Jibby, I've seen The neighbour over From me That When it just Picks it up And concertina You know what I mean And just like yeah. And you would actually think The wind would just like I know. Not even touch it, just go straight through it. But yeah. Uh huh. There must be something where physics gets it, you know, gets a hold of like the, the air or something like that. But can and now I've grown crimson crush outside and had a like a decent I wasn't that good last year, but I've got that wall again next to the the, the, the hut and everything like that. So I've I might try crimson crush. I don't know. Audrey, I mean, you're, I guess you're the queen of growing tomatoes outside. What? That's all we do. I, uh -huh. Yeah. Um, what would you recommend? Well, we don't really have the same varieties, do we? Mm. I mean, I grow all of my tomatoes outside. Um, whether they're big, big beefsteak or cherries or um, in between. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I feel like a this the climate thing for this question is probably you you three are probably gonna have to answer this one because I see is so ready. Jessie's, yes, she is. I see it. Like, the camera, I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I this is from um obviously blight is a thing to think about. So anything that's blight resistant. However, um when I uh, lost all my tomatoes that year. Sherry uh, really kindly sent me a whole load of short season tomatoes. So ones that can can ripen up with just a bit of um, like with the outdoor weather rather than needing the real heat of a greenhouse. And um, she sent me loads, actually. But ones that were really good. Jet Setter was fantastic. Well, and can. also, although it wasn't listed, it were I found it blight resistant because a lot of the other ones got blight and it didn't. Really, really nice, like big quite pale red tomato but a great flavor is this jet and setter was this the jet, jet set setter yeah and that's you see that's not blight resistant it doesn't say that it's blight resistant right. but i found it that it was really quite resistant to it it's, it's not immune obviously but um it's stuck it's like it stuck out an awful lot longer than all the rest of them did so if you've got blight in the area and whatnot, i would say that was probably the best the other one that was really, really good was Oregon Spring. They were both Oregon Spring uh, did succumb to the um, to the blight, but the tomatoes from beforehand were really good, and they ripened so quickly. Even though we had that really, really poor summer, yeah. So they they were they were good. Mm -hmm. Do you, just do you always always get blight? Will it always come? Like, yeah. all right, right. Me right. too. Do you? Or... Yeah, me too. Big time. So you, you plan, like, say, tomatoes out. Eventually, they'll get blight, or your potatoes will get blight, or every every, every year, I I get loads of comments saying, JB, like, why don't you grow tomatoes outdoor? And then every year, I do like one or two outdoors. Like, I stick a couple of spares out there, and they're just pathetic. 
they're just they just rubbish. Absolutely like the worst tomatoes I ever get. And then they get blight, and the the ones in the greenhouse go another six or seven weeks. Yeah. And that's why I don't grow tomatoes outdoors. Would a dwarf <laughs> tomato do better outside? Probably. Yeah, I try I tried I think the ones that I put outside were Crimson Crush, actually. They were a bit runty as well, and it is always the spares that I put out. So I'm not being it's not a very scientific test. But yeah. um if I've got the space undercover, I will I will. Actually, the it. other one that I that I grew outside that I thought was tough against blight from that jet setter and garnet. Garnet's a dark wow. cherry. Ooh. Um that's like my favorite of the red cherries. It's a really nice one. And like you say, I had a spare, spare plant of that one. Um and that was yeah, that that survived a really long time outside. And what was nice is you know when um I oh, so it's nice when things get blight, but you know, often when you see that black patch on the stem, like the whole plant gets it within days. This it kind of got a couple of patches, but it didn't seem to travel through the plant anywhere near as fast as it did the rest of them. So it was just kind of hold, holding back a bit. So, and that was really successful outdoors, mm. even with the pants summer. So, I know that. Um, speaking of blight resistance, uh, Sea Spring Seeds, who sell a lot of chili varieties, um, every year on Instagram, I see they're doing like a little blight trial where they're trying um, to breed blight resistant tomatoes. And it's always been on my my to-do list is to go and look at their tomato varieties but their instagram pictures are quite cool because you can see the different stages and the ones that are blight resistant which is just always amazing given like how powerful blight is as soon as it arrives and everything just goes blah within like a few days you know seeing stuff weather the storm is, is really there, cool i mean off the top of your head I, I only know of the crimson crush that is blight resistant is there any others that books like is blight resistant I'm just looking, I know, sorry, I'm probably looking a bit strange because I'm just brought up my seed uh, list, but I know there was one on my list that said that it was the most blight resistant so far, and I'm just looking mm. for it. Um, I know Denise always um, does, uh, what's it called, Outdoor Girl, I think, is the name of the tomato, which is very fitting, designed to for outdoors, and she's in Scotland, so you know. If you can grow a tomato in if Scotland, you, I was going to say, are you? Um... <laughs> so, JB, you know, if you, if you, um, Jess will come for you for your that's name if you, mm. if you can find, don't worry about it. If JB, if you put some tomatoes outside and they got blight, do you have to do the whole burn the plant kind of thing, or, or, or is it just I, I don't because for me it's such a certainty. I think it's, I think it might be one of those gardening myths. I'm not really sure. I think you can compost blight, but no, I, not can, I can just imagine the comments I, for the people. Is that no, I, so? You're, you've got to burn it. So you I'm going down a, a vicious little rabbit hole here, Jamie. Be careful what you say. So you're yeah, composting your your composting so your um your blight resistant tomatoes just with with your. Yeah, I just chuck them your, in the compost. Hold your head in shame. Your <laughs> the, the I'm whole, spreading it. Can you not hear the whole, the whole <laughs> Discord, the YouTube are going? Yes, <gasps> <laughs> right, are you I'm... doing? Yes, are you doing the right thing? You'll you'll be getting. I I just found those two varieties. One is called uh, Nagia F1, which is N A G I N A, and the other one is called Frocchini F1. Both of them are supposed to be completely, oh, I've lost you, completely, there you are, completely blight resistant. Right, so, right. nice. Hmm. And so just with blight going back, do, do you not bother them with tomatoes outside or do you just try and, like, can you not try and, be, is it a, like, because we don't get touch wood, God's sake, like much blight up, you know what I mean, round yeah. out here. Is it a thing you've got to try and beat with time and so it gets your tomatoes out early? I mean, it de it depends on the year because um, if you have a damp, like midsummer, like we had this year, you've got no hope. Like it's just blight fest. Um, and anybody anybody in my area that was trying to grow tomatoes outside that was just not growing blight resistant ones, they, they didn't even start to set fruit. They were got too early, no matter how how quick you got them out there. Right. Um, but well, aren't isn't there early blight and late blight? So you can kind of 
they're supposed see a to be going, yeah they're right? supposed to be two but they seem yeah. to merge i think mm-hmm. early blight can be like really early like april may yeah um, and yeah thankfully i've never had that because that can cause a bit of a <laughs> jess is just having a little short there <laughs> <laughs> So the gins went oh, down yeah. the the gins went down the wrong bloody way there. <laughs> My chins, did you say? No, <laughs> gin, gin, gin. <laughs> or did you get it over there then or not? Because if if you're outdoors all the time, I tight. think we're I think we're too hot. Right, uh, mm. because usually if even if we had a, a rain in the morning, it'll burn off by the afternoon. So I think, but I do have to keep when they're getting really bushy. I do have to keep them thinned out. So I find they don't; they're not as prone to anything. If I do that. I wonder so, if it helps being in like a bit of an, uh, like a suburban area as well, because like on allotments, you've got a real concentration of things ready to. Yeah, I'm like the propagate. only gardener I know of, like yeah. in my in my exact area here. So I wonder if that helps. That sure might help. Yeah. yeah. I wonder, you know, like, JB, do you think if we upro- uprooted you and give you like a season of Audrey's season, do you think you could actually grow? Because <laughs> it, it just sounds so bizarrely different to what yeah. we're, you know what I mean? And it's like, you know, we, we think we can grow stuff, you know what I mean? But then if we just transported each of ourselves to Audrey's climate, <laughs> no. He would probably feel miserably. Do you know what I mean? It's just like... But I can't grow uh, cool things all that well. Like what? Well, like cabbage in the middle of summer turns mm. into, you know, crispy critters after it's been eaten by all those white butterflies. Uh, but no, you have a longer cool period than we do, for sure. So mm. you can get a lot of cool crops in that I can't get in. Growing spinach for me, it it bolts almost the minute it looks at the ground. Mm-hmm. So uh, I'm going to try to get that out super early this year. And, you know, then it's possibly going to freeze. So, but I'm going to try it. Is that I, something, I, Audrey, and it, it's expensive for you to buy over there spinach? Like, because over here it's... You get it from Aldi or you know anywhere. Super my cheapest chips, like a pound a bag. You know if you were gonna, is it deer? Is it a deer vegetable over there? Oh, it's like any grain. No, it's not. You know, horrible. But I like the idea of being able to just go out and pick it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's why I grow lettuce grains. I I love the idea of just being able to go pick it and bring it in and have it for whatever meal we're we're cooking. So, and I'd love to do that with spinach, but it's not been my friend. So I've struggled with it. I never, I can never get spinach right. Yeah. So I'm going to do that with arugula this spring, get them out as early as possible and see what happens. I talked to Luke on Friday, who's from New Zealand, and he's almost lucky to, you know, can nearly go right through the year. Do you know what I mean? With, with his season's just yeah. pleasant and not pleasant and mild. You know, he does have winters, and but he says like a little bit further south, it it, it gets the winter. You know, it's reverse for us. It's a little bit further north. Yeah, but it's just you know the different areas around the world where rather rather nice to be honest. If you can just grow, keep growing tomorrow. I mean, he did say the his tomorrows were a little bit raggy through you know through the window but at least he, he got to martyrs right yeah, yeah. so maybe we should set up like a map of how we need to travel through the year so you know start in the spring over in the uk and then maybe come over here for a bit and then go down to New <laughs> zealand and then just do it over again yeah, <laughs> yeah. right <laughs> that would be fun we need like a what are they called a, an aircraft um, Harrier on the boat, you know, just one of them. Just turn the whole top section into an allotment and just sail around where the weather. <laughs> uh, yeah, follow nice. the good weather. Follow yeah. the good weather. Yes. Have we got? Have we got? Is it? Are we still in the middle, Jess? In the middle of the storm now? Are we still? Or has it passed this? You no, know, I don't I know. We was, we was said that like when I was looking at the forecast, it said like it was going to hit here Monday. 
so like mid day to day but it was definitely yesterday like last night it was loud mm -hmm. um, and it's I mean it's windy outside but it's not like it's not chaotic like it, lying in bed last night it's like hearing stuff like tumbling down the street you know like people's bins and stuff um yeah well, but it, so it obviously hit as earlier than they were expecting well, the daughter, like you say, the daughter dropped off the little, the little fella today. You know what I mean? That that incident with the outside picking up his. So he dropped. But Mel Ellie was saying <laughs> when she dropped them off that there, the house the way it was situated, the wind was so loud they had to both get up and sleep in spare rooms because the wind in their bedroom was like, <laughs> you know, it's like off yeah. plastic windows. <laughs> and oh, she said wow. it was just horrific. You know what I mean? So I had actually slept. Through everything, I don't know if we got it so bad, you know, especially compared to you know, like Mark's pictures. There, there's like huts. Mm. I mean, I haven't, I'm like JB, I haven't been up. Do you know what I mean? So, we're and are you still windy down there then, JB? Are you because you're not it's, well I'm working from home all day, so it's quite cozy. It's <laughs> not look too bad though. Uh, I think, yeah, last night was definitely the worst of it. And our, our bedroom at the back just everything hits sideways. We barely got any sleep just with the rain hammering on the window. But uh yeah, I'm just hoping the plot's okay. Did I'm um, sure it'll be fine. I'm sure it'll be fine. So you got rain as well? Because we haven't had rain, my yeah, it's tipping it down. Yeah. Right. Right. Absolutely. It was raining it's just here. surreal walking outside and it's like boiling. <laughs> it's like yeah, like 12, 13 degrees. It was really weird yesterday. No, no, that's Nothing there for us. Um, anything we're doing now? I know, Audrey, your this is Patty by the Seas asking. Is anything we're doing different in the garden? And actually, Audrey's inspired me a little bit because you're just not doing the cabbages, Audrey, or anything to do midsummer. You're going to do. I a... even gave all my seeds away. That's how much I'm not doing it. Wow, that's serious. Yes, it is. I really mean it. Yeah, I no, I'm using for microgreens. <laughs> yeah. Well, and a lot of times I would do that, but I, I that just for me is a good cutoff. Like, nope, 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 not even keeping that, the. Yes, seeds. that's if you get rid of them. That's um, oh, look at the, look at them. Oh yes, I actually did them finally. I've been meaning to do them for a while. <laughs> so they are they under lights then, GB or not, or just? Nah, they're just on the windowsill. All right, so they're still getting light, natural light in. Yeah, they. I found last year they didn't actually need the need the grow light. They've mm -hmm. got enough to just kind of do their thing with a little bit of windowsill. You don't grow them for for too long, so. Well, to be honest, you, you let them stretch a little bit longer, and it's just more kind of <laughs> yeah. more greens, isn't it? You know it's what exactly, I mean? Yeah, exactly, yeah. The one, yeah. You know, they're I'm... they're hard to grow wrong. Because, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, um, just getting them very going, forgiving. I don't know. I took them down. I, you know, when Tony O'Neill was on, he mentioned the, the aubergines. I did my aubergines, and I'm sure it was a day I was just too late. And they went, I mean, the leggy, they're not that bad a leggy. I'll just plant them deeper in the pot. But it was like 12 hours, if that. Yeah. And just, oh, you know yeah. what I mean? You think, oh, man, yeah, fuck it, yeah. You know what I mean? Just, just. Yeah. Missed it because I've got them in the greenhouse there now and everything seems okay, but it was like 12 hours, you know what I mean? Is that just as that ever happened to you where you kind of turn around and you went, oh, dear me? It happened a lot last year. Last year was my first year with lights. Um, and I it took a bit of experimenting to get it right. Because, uh, <laughs> yeah, it would be really like I didn't, I hadn't, I don't think I'd appreciated how quickly the first moment you see that, like, them break the surface you need to put the lights on them otherwise they're still firing up through what they think is the soil really so yeah it was but I've got um got everything like stacked up here at the moment and I've just stuck a load of shot glasses over my the chilies that haven't in fact you nice. see them yes little, little, all the ones that haven't germinated they've got little shot glasses on them now um, JB did you in like, did JB, did you invent the shot glass <laughs> method? Because I'm praising you for it there, but it seems I know. Like I doing this something and I wonder if he started a new little <laughs> No, it always it warms my heart when I see people saying that. But no, I got it from it wasn't even Chili Chump actually. It was um I'm one of Chili Chump's patrons and he's got a Discord. And I saw it on there like years and years ago, one of the guys. 
And Chili Chump saw the the guy posting it and was like, oh, that's a brilliant idea. And uh, everyone on the Discord started doing it like four years ago. And now it seems to be like quite the the done thing. It's quite nice to see. Because it's even in our Discord now. Yeah, know, exactly. Yeah, it's good doing yeah, so it. Jade is doing it. What are what are the, the, the shot glasses? It's just are they, from... are they glass or just plastic little No, things? just little plastic. You get 50 for like a quid. They're probably not a great or, thing just to like, buy. You know, but... those little... I mean, I, I do like understand jelly that I, I, I should have, I should yeah. have clear ones. Just they look like them. they look like your medication shots. Then, my, <laughs> you know, what I mean? the little things you get over the top of uh, uh, cough syrup. No, I should have <laughs> clear ones, but th I didn't go out and specifically buy these, and I've only got like colourful neon ones. So, there. From the raving oh, days. <laughs> yes. Uh <-huh>. Yeah, jello <laughs> shots. Here we go. Yeah. yeah, it's just good for keeping the moisture in. That's really it. Just to it stops the the air from drying out there. I was going to say, well, it, be kind enough then, JB. Just explain what is the shot method. Of... Yeah, so it's it's ideal for when you've got <laughs> uh, a lots of different varieties in one cell or one cell tray. Um, you know, because you can't move the entire tray once a few of them start to germinate. So if you put a shot glass over the ones that haven't yet germinated, it just really helps to keep the heat and the moisture in that that little cell it's a, just a little way of micromanaging the environment for your seedlings when you've got 40 seedlings in a in a cell tray you know it is it seems a great method i've never needed to use it you know what i mean but i think it helps i always i i don't know if it actually does but it's really nice when you've got one on, on like a shot glass on there and then You've got a seedling that's, you know, five days behind everyone else. And you, well, know, you see it and you go, ah, I was going to say, if you see it and it, and it gets all like water droplets inside, it's doing its thing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah, been exactly. doing it. Did anybody see Mark? You know, I, I know he kind of lives above you on the wall there and they're all a little bit kind of careful with their money. You know what I mean? <laughs> a bit care. But he did his, he did his, all his workings out for like the, the Super yeah. 7, how much the Super 7 to runs cheapest chips. Yeah, it was really cool. I huh? really two liked pence, those, Was it two videos. pence a day, the Super 7? It was cheap. All of it was cheap. I can't remember the exact figures. Uh -huh. Everyone should go and watch the videos if yes. you have the exact yes. figures. But yeah, he did all different kinds of grow lights, propagators, heat mats. He's done a little series. Mm -hmm. Really, really cool. But Just I was surprised at how cheap a lot of it was, actually. especially. And it, he did it on like new rates, you know, so it's like 30p a kilowatt hour or whatever, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know. I remember but i know i've got some like 10 i've got them big things i've got some like three big things from mars hydro and i'm sure i got like the daughter's partner to have a look who's an electrician and he was just like oh johnny not too often you know yeah, <laughs> like, like, yeah. all right 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 because <laughs> last year oh the you know when i had it all in the hood it was not enough the electrics from the house was tripping mm. out every bloody you know what i mean it was that kind of draining stuff so Jess, are you are you still using your heat mat? Is it is it working all right? Because you it's all in you. No, oh, we're gonna have a little look there. We... Heat mat is under here. Right. Excuse me. Yeah, so it's really it's really nice and toasty warm. Cucumbers up. One. Um, but yeah, everything else. This this whole shelving unit's kind of getting quite hot now. So, <laughs> so there's no light at all under there yet. Will there be? Actually, you'll be currently if... shining on my face. <laughs> yeah, so... yeah. Okay. <laughs> what what actual brand of lights do you use, Jesse? Do you know? I know you get asked this quite a lot. Uh, they came from the the companies changed their name, but they were called Urban Grow when I bought them. Um, um. Yeah, it still says Urban Growers on it. But it's not going it's, it's to gonna change. <laughs> <laughs> the name's still good. Yeah. It might have been linked to them and just changed. No, they, um, I thought it might have had like the name of the the type of light that it is, but they don't. It just says Urban Growers. Um, see, yeah. yeah, but they, I find them quite good because you can bend them around, like you can really mm. manipulate them and them to spread over quite a wide area. I need to get. I need to get a second one for the Jess has got some flowers down there. Um, there's a the light down there is flickering. It's been bothering me. I only know it's like ten minutes ago, but that light doesn't play with my camera. But um, all the sweet peas are looking really leggy, so we need we need some extra lights. So is, I might just get like a little cheapy. 
the light that's flickering there, JB, is that, is that a, like a grow light, is it? Or... Yeah, but it's crap. It's like... It looks a little bit yellowy, to be honest. It's Yeah, it's just... um, Which, you know, what that's reflecting one of the blooming um, fungus nut traps, um, uh, which is yellow. Yeah. Because, um, yeah, there's a bit of that this year. But, um, yeah, it was like an old thing. I bought it like four years ago. It's like LED strips. It just doesn't really do anything i bought it for my chilies way back when and got leggy chilies and thought uh maybe maybe it wasn't close enough or something like that so then i did it for another season which was really stupid because then i got leggy <laughs> seedlings again and then i was like all right sod it i'm buying a proper proper light um but it seems like you can get relatively cheap or affordable lights um you know how much were those ones jesse probably like 20 30 for about 25 quid yeah um and if they're doing the job then that's fine isn't it What's yours, JB? The 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 nice big fancy Ooh. one there. The nice big one is a Viper Spectra. I want to say a P one hundred. Um, it's very good, and one of the best things about it is that it's got a dimmer, so it's really mm. nice because you can use it. If you don't have a dimmer, your only other method of control is raising and lowering the light, which is faff. Um, so being able to put it on like twenty percent when the seedlings first come up, and then like each day increasing it a little bit is really really nice. Uh, that one was about eighty pounds um which isn't too bad it's very efficient um but the main issue is coverage it's a sm it's a square so i can't really do more than one one seed tray or two seed trays at a push um so yeah we definitely need a little just a little bit extra could you not do like the the, the you know like the shop method the tin foil method <laughs> Yes, but it's a shared office, and Jess won't let me. My partner, <laughs> she's like, no. And she, uh, we've got like a big long desk, and we both work from home. So she does her work calls, and every time she goes on a work meeting, and she's like, oh, your bloody lights on, and she's got to get up and turn off the grow light. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so even if, if that was all like tin foiled and everything, she'd be even more annoyed. But uh, <laughs> maybe one day, maybe one day we can do it. It is, it is. If you can do the tin foil, it's like very recommended it does massively increase the efficiency of mm -hmm. um, how much yeah. light they can afford. when when these are up um I've, I've i've got like cardboard covered in tin foil that's going to go around them so i'll have like two grow areas in there um but the reason i mean i really like those block lights and i was going to get some before i got these but actually kind of fixing them up and everything you needed you needed something solid like to have them on and uh, but because I'm shifting this blooming thing around all the time, I just wanted something that I could just clip. And they do have, like, I don't know if you can see it, they do have, like, mm. a a mm. controller that you can change the the strength of the light and stuff. So Nice. All right. Mine is a very funny solution. That's like an Ikea cabinet, and I put a door handle in the top. <laughs> so it's just hanging from a door handle because <laughs> I had to hang it off something, and I was like, oh, that'll do. Screw the door what? handle in. <laughs> Jess, what when you've got it set up with lights, what because I remember someone asking in the Discord, what's your your times? Do you know what I mean? Do you have it like six o'clock in the morning until ten at night? Or? Um mum turns it on when she gets up and I turn it off when I go to bed. Like <laughs> it kind Me of too. depends. I, we don't have a they do actually have a timer on them that you can yeah, that you can set so that they come on and go off at the right time, but I've never really just an old-fashioned girl just there. Just turn it on. Turn, turn it, it on. Turn it <laughs> on. That's not me at all, you know. Everything's got to have a smart plug and everything. And now we've just got another light in the hall. And it's like, switch on hall light. You know what I mean? And it just pops up there. I just love that kind of. <laughs> and I had it all in the hut. Do you know what I mean? Six o'clock till 10 o'clock. That was me times. JB, was I right in them kind of Yeah, times? that's bang on. Yeah, the textbook answer is like, 16 hours for a chili 16 to 18 hours um but i do the same i just turn it on when i get up and turn it off when i go to bed so it's a little bit less probably but yeah it's fine they do all right don't they what about then what about oh mum turns it on for you i was gonna say what about if there was a heavy both of you two heavy i'm not talking about audrey here but you heavy sesh the yeah, night I, before <laughs> i had that the other week let him be plums yeah. jesus Christ. i did that <laughs> Shot yeah. up with a very thick head at like half nine. Like, oh, turn the plants on, turn the plants on. <laughs> oh no, I'm afraid my plants would just have a very grey day that that day. Like <laughs> that's. Audrey, are, are you in on this 
group as well with lights turning off and on? Are you automatic? Oh. Or, Cause I know you use grow lights, don't you? Oh yeah. I use a lot of grow lights. Um, Right now I don't have them set up cause I only, I have one sh shelf lit. So that one, we're just kind of get up, turn it on, go to bed, turn it off. But once I get more uh, lights set up, like working on it, because there'll eventually be four shelves of lights and wow. uh, that'll all be auto at mm -hmm. that point. It's funny, I'm like, I'm kind of jumping in almost book naked in the greenhouse there because I've got no lights and I'm just relying on daylight. You know what I mean? So I, I don't know if they're going, you know, JB, when you mentioned last year, yours just kind of, stood still for a little bit i'm just thinking oh you know what i mean i keep on looking at them and thinking are you gonna you know a little bit more see what but i haven't put... you have your chilies in the greenhouse wow yeah it's brave mm. it's very brave wow it's brave or crazy i'm not quite sure i've got i've got heat in there i've got lots of heat in there <laughs> you know what i mean it's kind of oh, okay so it's warm oh it's 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 warmer than the bloody house you know what i mean it's kinda... <laughs> but it's actually like it was okay i've got i've even got trays on that haven't got anything well i've got them on now because i took the union to put the unions on but i had a tray that wasn't even doing anything just with heat when mark said two pence a day i thought well, i'll just put a little bit of extra heat around the, the, the bloody poly the, uh, the green house so but i'm more concerned northeast natural light have i got enough yeah. and i'm sure i i must have done this last year and i got it you know i mean it was it was good so I'm not if it works, you know how it many works. hours? Oh, sorry. No, that's it. That's all I got. If it works, it works. If you did it last <laughs> year and it's fine. I mean, yeah, if it is probably best. You could maybe give them like a bit of supplemental light if you mm. wanted to in the in the evenings or in the mornings mm. or something like that. But if it works, it works. Well, I did have can you see the strip lighting around there? I did have the same one in the greenhouse, but for whatever reason it's kinked and something's went wrong. So when I press on, it just all flashes red, green, and blue all at the same time. So it looks like it's like a lonely man's disco. Do you know what I mean? So I'm like, oh, I have the lights going off all the time. So I'll have to um, change that, to be honest, if I was going to have it. And actually them big Mars Hydro things, that like, well, I kind of get them out. The, the huge, heavy things, I wouldn't like to hang them up in the, the bloody mine and, yeah, well, aluminium you, would bend. Why don't do you, you know how them, much Tony? sunlight you get in a day? I'd, well, it's it's like probably now around about seven, and is it maybe half five, six when it's starting to get dark? Yeah, I get. Right, yeah, we're we're eight, eight o'clock. Actually, I've got it written down over there. Eight o'clock, sunrise. Four thirty, sunset. Yeah. Right. Oh, doesn't sound much, but I tell you why I'm not selling them, JB, because the government have changed the rules and now you get taxed on things do you know what i mean like on uh, ebay and i was like oh i'm not going down that route of like giving giving them more i'll just have them shoved up there for eternity so mm. that's hence why jess i'm getting back to um pad by the sea are you doing anything different this year are you, you going to be doing anything kind of strange and unusual or more of the I haven't got that far yet. I haven't um I haven't really got into the only thing I know that I'm gonna have another go at is chickpeas. Um because I started them as a bit of a they were very, very late last year. Somebody gave gave me a packet of them and um I just thought, oh well, I'll give it a go and just see they might be a disaster. And they weren't great. Like I hadn't quite realized how chickpeas grow. Um but they were delicious. So I'm gonna sow I'm gonna sow more of them. But the very few we got, Mum and I were like in the allotment, and they were really, really <laughs> nice. So definitely doing them again, but but better hopefully. Ex um, just ex explain then, because I have no idea what chickpeas do. Do they grow like a pea? Do they have a pea? They pod? do grow like a pea, but when you look, um, because I was completely clueless, like I know that they're in the same family, and they do grow in pods. There's like two chickpeas per pod. Mm -hmm. Um, and the plants are really, really pretty. They're kind of um like but much finer foliage so they're kind of like airy fairy and when you look at the pictures of them they look like these really dense bushes what I hadn't realized is there's about like 30 plants planted in that little dense clump and I planted them all out individually 
so I just had like these little weedy sticks of um <laughs> of plants that had like two peas on the end of each of them like in two thirds of a bed so I'm not doing that again I'm going to sow them really dense like you would peas give them a bit of support although they don't climb they're quite kind of they've got tendrils and they're kind of all over the show so I'm going to try them in the drain pipe like I do normal peas and I'm also going to um like sow them in you know like the little square pots um just do like four in each and plonk them out and, right. and see which one's better I've they never... were so delicious like fresh oh. green chickpeas were lovely I, I know. I'm so naive. Does it? Do the taste like? <laughs> I can't believe I've been saying this. Do the taste like chickpeas? Because we eat chickpeas all the time, but they're out of a tin. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, they had. Um, you know that chickpeas have got quite a distinctive flavour. If you think of like a a fresh pea, texture wise, but with that flavour, they they right. were they were really nice actually. I. JB does not look convinced. I'm just, that. you're just really, all... there's a lot of like, my imagination is working overtime to try and combine a lot of different textures and flavors. That's all. Yeah, so it's not like um, they they have more of a texture of, you know, when you've left the peas a bit too long. Yeah. And they're quite dense. They're not like little sweet popping, like petty part yeah, yeah, type yeah. Yeah. ones. But they're, yeah, they were, they were really, really tasty. Mm. It's the, it's the two, Two chickpeas yeah. to a pod. That's the one's getting, you know what I mean? There's a there's a lot of work there to kind of harvest and do. Yeah, I Is mean, it... I don't think I'd be replacing like canned chickpeas and I wouldn't necessarily like dry them to use that way, mm -hmm. but just eating them fresh, like in a salad or something, they were can you young. Can you do, Jess, if you want to do, like, you know, like we do pea shoots, can you do chickpea shoots? I have no idea. Their foliage was quite hairy. Oh. Um, mm. <laughs> like. Ew. <laughs> no, 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 thank you. <laughs> I, I can't imagine that you would want to really munch, munch through it. They had like, like a soft white downiness mm. to them. You know, like very, very slightly like the inside of a broad bean pod, mm. but like on the leaves, that sort of. Oh, yeah. Mm. Don't know. None of us are looking enthused by the prospect to be it's, dead. Yeah, it's making me think of chili peppers, of course, because there's um the pubescence are like that, which I think is like the Latin term for when you've got like yeah downy downy foliage. Mm. I'm excited for those this year though. <laughs> I was going to say as well, like um, is it is the low harvest because of our climate? Is it just that they're not really adapted for? The UK. Well, I think my my low harvest was particularly because I planted them so late that it wasn't you'd normally put them in I think sort of the same sort of time that you would put peas in so like mid to late spring I would get some in this year but um I, I wanted to keep giving them I can't even remember guy at the garden center I used to work with I think just sent me a load of kind of seed that they had left over nice. and there was this this packet of um, chickpeas in there, so I thought I'd give it a go. So yeah, I don't think I even got them in until it must have maybe been July when I sowed them, um, and obviously cool. had them completely wrong. So where yeah. the where the native from? Is it kind of like hot? Mediterranean? Is it? And oh wait, no, that's just the cuisine. I don't know where they're from because I know it's like um, uh, Syria. Yeah, so like um, Middle East. Right. I've never seen Actually, them. Actually, even... I've just looked at the packet and it says you sow them in February. So I'm talking nonsense. <laughs> like February, March, April. So I'll get them in. And I guess you could do succession sowings as well, couldn't you? With yeah, I think so. Yeah. Uh huh. Show us the packets, Jess, because I. Sorry, I'm so sorry. I keep coughing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No. Like Thank you, seed ones. Yeah. Nice. But yeah, really nice. Right. Well, are you doing anything different than GB or is there anything? Uh, is there a few mild bits? One thing I was thinking of in terms of like new crops, though, has anyone ever done sweet potatoes? Well, yes. I yeah. I tried, had them in the greenhouse and they were looking all right. But, you know, they, they scrabble along the ground and then we went on holiday. My mother came to look after the, the polytunnel and thought there were weeds and pulled them up and <laughs> That was the last, 
you know epic what I mean? fail. Epic, yeah, it's <laughs> not an epic, epic fail. fail. Yeah. It's not beating the, the it's not beating the uh, the sliders, but it's still. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh uh, yeah, I've cleared all them weeds. Our Tony, they're all sorted. You know what I mean? So, but tell us, you took a picture of your feet. Oh, Audrey, I could hardly. Oh, okay. No, I didn't. No, no, no. I just think I was that almost it's... hysterical. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> oh. But I haven't. Yeah. So, so, I've not had so no are issues. you? Are you going to grow uh, sweet potatoes this year? Not me. No. No, I've JB. Seen... I would like to try. Yeah, last year I I tried it really late. You know where you get a bit of sweet potato and then try and create the slips by putting it in water, mm -hmm. and it just turned into like grey mouldy water. <laughs> they didn't do yes. anything, but that's because they were just like supermarkets. So maybe they had like anti sprouting stuff on them. I don't know. Um, maybe I, you're meant I... to buy like. Oh yeah, I was going to buy Organic. some slips. Yeah, but or, they were like or... twenty quid for four plants or something. I was like, you know what? No. <laughs> So maybe that's the only way to grow them. I don't know. I did watch no, I... on on YouTube. You know, there's the Australian guy who he's always in his shorts. Yeah, and he, yeah. And he he um, self sufficient me. Yes, and he grew some, and you know, it was like let's have a look what. And he was pulling out these things that were like, and it was like, eh, yeah, mother chucker. Do you know what I mean? So he can get um, obviously totally different climate. They, like, they grow like total weeds. Like mm -hmm. in Australia, my friend's mm -hmm. garden is just like just every time you dig up to plant something, just sweet potatoes like coming out. But wow. I, I had them quite successfully in the greenhouse the first year I tried them. They were brilliant, but it was a variety that was adapted to grow in not such hot weather. So I can't remember what it's called, but I'll look it up and, and send you the name of it. Yeah, they were you. they were really, really successful. And then the second year that it was a complete fail, absolute mm. fail. And I'd set up the camera and was like ready for the big reveal. And I got like, I wouldn't even do that thick. They were like this thick sweet potatoes, just like these long. Yeah, it wasn't I saw thing. that. I remember seeing yeah. that. Yeah, I do remember those. Yeah, epic fail. One or the other. Yeah, <laughs> you actually could have yeah. put one of them pink fur apple potatoes <laughs> in and just pretended it was a. You know what I mean? <laughs> do the so do the like. Heat and plenty of water, or do the other like an arid dry? So. Yes, they, they like like heat and water. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we well, wouldn't give them. Okay. Really, we can give really them one of them stuff. things over here. Yeah, it would yeah. be nice in the polytunnel. Be quite cool to let them. Yeah, go a I little think bit they wild. just need the heat. Mm. Um, I usually start mine just from organic sweet potatoes that I find in the store. Okay. They have, yeah, they have no problem um, sprouting up. Yeah. So you can get I mean, your in your season because your season's short. You can get a like a sweet potato. Oh, oh me? Yes, you. Yes, you. Oh. <laughs> yes. Well, yeah, yeah, there's a few of us here. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, our season's about half the year. So if I get them in, they're mm. they're fine. And it's so much hotter. <laughs> like, mm. yeah, I mean, so they you, get the heat think, for sure. Yeah. Uh, but down south, oh. Can they grow? Can they grow sweet potatoes down there? Mm -hmm. They're probably like how uh, that the Australian guys come out. I mean, they're just they have the perfect climate for those. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I usually get them at Trader Joe's. I don't know if you have that over there. We don't. Kind of, kind of Aldi ish, um, and they ser they sell a Japanese. It's a Japanese sweet potato. Purple on the outside, but almost white on the inside. Ooh. Best sweet potato on the planet. Nice. I might so, look that up. I'll write that down. I think it's called a Murasaki. Murasaki. Yeah. So good. I just want to show as well, I got off grown local some marathon broccoli. But that's your a, that's your that's yours right there. Yeah. Send us a little kind of and cauliflower. All you send us a nice little mm -hmm. kind of stocking for us as well. <laughs> Put all my oh. kind. She's of, there uh, all around. So, but I've never. You did great with your marathon last year. Yes. Well, I, Audrey, I wanted kind of this sometime this. What are we now? The twenty second. Sometime this month, 
sew both collie and broccoli and then just try and and only want like some like five plants, you know, like just see if I can get them five plants very early before like I do it again for like the main do you know what I mean? But when we were talking about what we we're gonna do, or you've inspired me to kind of try a few more flowers. Do you know what I mean? It's good. Mm, no, no, I'm um be, purely because I fail at most veg. You know what I mean? The flowers, <laughs> just you know what I mean? Like the butterflies don't seem to I just love them more than it. You know what I mean? So like yeah. let them come. Let them come. So we'll have to have kind of so what kind of flowers are you growing? I don't even we'll know. do a special. We'll do a we special got, episode. We've got to do a flower special. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. that would be awesome. And actually, we're going to have, you know, we're going to have a, because didn't you see Hannah wanted to come on as well about, because we're going to have more, we're going to have 12 folks on, you know what I mean? It's like, it, it's not the, but we'll have to get, we'll have to get cards to talk. Like mm -hmm. hold up your card and <laughs> you get well, called. You know what on. I want to, you know what I want to, like... What I want to do as well, Audrey, while, while we're, I might as well try and organize it one day, is me and you, Audrey, are going to be like running a quiz and we'll get Jesse, we'll get everyone we can, even people from outside to come on. And okay. then we, just, when you said get little bits of paper, so we'll, we'll ask a question. You'll have to keep me score because I'll just forget if whoever, and when I will mention a question, you hold up a bit of paper, you'll see, right, it's JB who you, first one to hold up a bit of paper is going <laughs> on the question. So I thought, oh, on a Friday night, we'll do... Like That'd a, be fun. Quiz. Amazing. Quiz, you know what Garden I mean? Garden quiz or, yeah. Well, garden and general knowledge, because I, I keep on asking... <laughs> Ooh, general oh, knowledge oh, quiz. Yeah. Now mm. you're talking. <laughs> <laughs> so, but... Maybe me and you, Audrey, that would be doing the because if it was gardening only, it'd be more. It's hard to find gardening questions that can relate to you know what I mean. Every country, you know what I mean. Oh so yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I I realized even as we were talking about what were you just talking about? Oh, tomato varieties that would grow outside. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know of one that wouldn't, but I know we don't have the same varieties, so that was definitely location centric. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So yeah, I get it. No, no problem. It'd be, it'd be, we'll try and organ get organize that as well for one one night. I'll one. be your quiz mistress. Oh yes, <laughs> yes. How's that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> my uh, Anthea Turner to Bruce <laughs> Forsyth. <laughs> All right, my loves. <laughs> right. Have we got JB? Have you got anything else? Or are we? No, I think that's it. I oh, think no. that's it. <laughs> that... Jesse, have you got anything last lasting thoughts? Anything to say or? No, not particularly. I was going to do an onion update, but I um I haven't brought them up we here with me. So yeah. yeah, we were meant to do that. You know, next I filmed... week I think we should talk about as we're doing a grow along, and, my, and they're coming up. They're looking really good. Like some of them are, are proper big now. So did you, Jess? Did you put yours in in the green tree, like loads? Have you done it like one? Did you do like one? Or... No, I did them in those in the short not root trainers, you know, the pop-up, yes. pop-up partable pots. It's a good point. Yeah. Well, hey, well, hey, <laughs> <laughs> so yours are kind of, because I've now got what we talked about, JB talked about, I've got to now thin them out and do the, the, the replanting, do you know what I mean? Which yeah. was going to be a job, but all my trees are up at the allotment. Yeah, that's... see, that's the, that's exactly it, isn't it? There's always <laughs> something little like that, uh, isn't there? Yeah. It was so well, easy. That's, but if that's like the next stage, maybe we should, do that next for the next next Monday. Yes. And do some bit. Do a bit pot. I'll do a bit of potting up while we're on, and we. Can... Yes, we'll have we'll have Miss Jessie Sheffield on demonstration. Did someone mentioned as well, you know, like why aren't you all doing demonstrations? I was like, <laughs> yeah, do you realise how like hard it is just even to do this? You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I think not. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah we that, have a, a we lot. have a real no compost in the office rule. If I bought in a bag of compost in here, <laughs> it would be pay. I'm lucky to get the seed trays in here, you know. But no, no, it all happens no compost. In people in the office <laughs> <laughs> normally it's like food you know like no, yeah. no chip papers or anything but for the normal person but no it's for us it's compost <laughs> we brought compost in here again i can tell it's all over the bloody <laughs> <laughs> right well i think until and i just a heads up i 
I haven't as yet recorded anything for Friday. So there might not be a, a kind of one on Friday. If, I, if, you can, if anyone wants to get interviewed or something, if any got any ideas for a Friday show, let us know. But at this moment, because it's nice, this is why I was, it's hard to get JB, it's hard to get Audrey or Jesse when I want to, which is like dinner times on a Monday, like on a Tuesday and Wednesday when I've got the house to myself. So it's why we've we've been doing the pre-recording because it's one of the few times that we can all we can all make it. Yes, it makes to be honest, a it's, bit easier. it's JB. It's like a hundred times better for me. This even yeah, yeah. just. Folks didn't see it though, but we, I just pressed record and then JP went off, pressed the wrong yeah, button, just cut himself off. Now, if that's live, it's just chewy as anything. Do you know what I mean? It's just like, although it's, it's just the face I put on where I'm like laughing and giggling, inside I'm crying. Do you know what I mean? It's just, <laughs> I'm just crying and just want to like roll away. <laughs> you go offline and you're shaking. I'd rather have the dog shit on me sliders. Do you know what I mean? That's how bad it is. You know what I mean? So I don't think we're going to get monetized for this. It's a all... new standard comparison level. <laughs> is it as bad as dog shit on your sliders? Slider, like, yes. oh. mm -hmm. There's a meme uh, in that. Somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Not happen again. I tell you, I'll wear socks. <laughs> oh, oh I mean, it's even worse. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> right. On that note, Jesse, where, where can we find you, Jesse? Uh, yeah. G um, yeah. Mm. Je Je Jesse at Plot 37. There we go. That's it. What? Yes. <laughs> How long you've had that name? <laughs> oh, I don't know. I just said my, my first thought was um, Richmond, like here. Like, I know. Everyone's just going to come and actually find I was, me. I was <laughs> thinking, of, am I going to have to edit out her and she's just blurted out her home house address? <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to give you my postcode. Like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, just, your YouTube will be fine, Jess. Thank you very much. Thank you. JB, where can we find you? You can find me at Naturally JB on Instagram recommend... and YouTube. Yes, they recommend oh. the sweet pea one, to be mm -hmm. honest. And the chili one, to be honest, if you're kind of... Ah, uh, my chili guide, yeah. Please do go and see that, if you've not. A lot of work went into that. <laughs> that was a big one. <laughs> yes. Audrey, where can we find you? Uh, at Real Food Comes Dirty. There we go. On Are you Instagram getting videos out? Are you getting videos out? I have, like, five that are two seconds away from being done. Oh, well, I... they're coming out. Yes. Uh, and I'm doing a gr ginger grow with me. Ooh, can we so... do that in the UK? Yes, you can. Yeah. Mm, right. Yes. Well, that's. Oh, well, that's oh, that's the first right. one that's coming up because it, it needs to get started. If you want to oh, get actual not... ginger, well, I'm going to watch that. I'd love to. I'd love to get right. ginger. Yes. Cool. Hey, we'll have a ginger special. <laughs> there you go. There's a lot to, to get say about ginger. That. Did you did you realize I used to be <laughs> what is what... it took me a second that one? What did you I missed it? Come on, tell tell I missed the joke. What was the ginger joke? grows, Hannah? I just said we'll have to we'll yes. have to get Hannah on for it. Yes. Yeah. I haven't seen Hannah for ages, to be honest. So, so yeah, are you talking about busy. ginger haired people? In that instance, yes. Okay. <laughs> I used to be a ginger back in the day. Well, so, so I actually saw I was strawberry blonde, Audrey. That's what I oh. <laughs> so, it's what me it's when people picked on us, it's what my mom said the hair my hair colour was strawberry blonde. <laughs> oh <laughs> when all the when everyone picked on us and called us ginger nut. <laughs> <laughs> Is that when in your dread days you had uh, strawberry blonde? Strawberry blonde, yes. Don't okay. see a ginger, yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. Are we? Are we? This is getting ridiculous. Now. Yeah. Okay. Ridiculous. They wouldn't do this on Sorry, on God. Did you just burp there? I know. I just cackled like a witch. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Unexpected. <laughs> Right then, right. Oh. Let's end it now before it just gets out of hand. Okay. Take good care, everyone. Thank you very much. See you next time. See you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>